Hey guys, it's Paige or Duchess Celestia, and according to Twitter, you guys wanted to hear about my best, worst, and weirdest convention experiences, so I'm here to deliver. Honestly, the ones I'll be talking about are just the tip of the iceberg, because my memory is a black abyss that significant events go to to die, and I'd say I remembered maybe 10% of the shit I would have wanted to talk about if I could properly retain information, like a functional human being. But here's the stuff I do remember. First though, today's art is Misfortune from League of Legends. Yes, more League fan art. I'm sorry, I swear I'm gonna work on other shit soon. I just, I love League. I hate that I love League, but I love League and this is who I am. I'm a flawed person. I'm also a Misfortune main, which is why literally 50% of my existing League fan art is of her, but I promise I'll draw something else in my next video. Okay, so let's start with my best convention experiences, because who doesn't want some wholesome stories during these trying times? As much as I love to spill tea, I really have way more experiences that would fall into this category than any other, and that's partially because I'm lucky, and partially because the convention community is just generally pretty great. My first experience with the community being such a blessing was actually my first convention ever. I think I was 17, and my partner and I were living in Quebec, and I took my first leap into professional art and got a table at a small convention a few towns over. It's such a good memory that so much of it still sticks with me so clearly to this day. Like, my partner's mom dropping us off at the hotel and buying us sushi before she left. It's such a small thing, but feeling so supported and loved just made the excitement even more aggressive. This convention was also the first time that I really started to feel both like a professional and an adult, if that makes sense. Like, keep in mind that I was 17, and while it wasn't the first time I'd stayed in a hotel without an adult or family member, it was the first time that I was really away from family in a completely different city for work. And while the convention wasn't super financially successful, as I'll get into later, that feeling of support, independence, and hope for my career was what really made it into such a positive memory. Not only that, but we made friends with our table neighbors and went to Eastside Mario's with them after the vendors hall closed. And it was just such a great feeling to be surrounded by like-minded people who were just like me in trying to make a name for themselves with art. And the pasta and garlic bread spoke for themselves. That really goes without saying. Some of the other experiences that I really treasure are honestly just really small ones. Like the first time someone who stopped by my table told me that they'd been to my table the previous year and were hoping that I'd be back so that they could come by again, for example. Like someone actually remembered my art enough to make a conscious effort to look for me. I don't know, it just felt validating and heartwarming, and every time a customer would say something like that, my cold dead heart would fill with joy. Seeing actual, tangible evidence that people genuinely like your work will never not be the greatest feeling in the world. Which actually brings me to the next story, which was the year that I was lucky enough to get to design uh, an apparel design for the convention in question. Not only was this one of my first big boy commissions, but it was for my absolute favorite convention. And while I was tabling there that year, I saw so many people wearing that design, and it was just, it was surreal. I still think back to that all the time, and how I just fucking smack my partner's arm excitedly whenever someone passed by wearing one of the sweaters, like, every single time. She must have hated me. My big best experience story, though, is actually about a cosplayer. In one of my previous videos, I mentioned that I would often give away buttons of characters to people who are cosplaying that character. And in this case, I had given a button of Sans from Undertale to a Sans cosplayer. I don't think they could actually talk from inside the mask thing, but they were cool and they nodded and gave me a thumbs up, and I assumed that that was the end of it. I was wrong, however, because he came back with a couple of packets of ketchup and just fucking wordlessly passed them to me and left again. This guy was an absolute goddamn icon. And whoever they were, I remember them fondly to this day because I put the ketchup packets in the bottom of my cash box and kept them there as a permanent good luck charm. They're still there, actually, I just checked. And that convention was the first one where I made a significant profit, so bless you, Sans man, wherever you are. Alright, so now onto the T, my worst convention experiences. The first is actually the same convention that I mentioned before, the first one in Quebec. While it was overall an amazing experience, and one that I still treasure, it was financially a fucking disaster. I made a hundred dollars, and through the haze of inexperience and excitement, my little child brain was like, oh hell yeah, a hundred dollar profit. But with the price of the table, merch production costs, and the hotel, it hurts me to look back now and think of the huge loss that it actually was. I was so incredibly lucky to have family supporting me with it, so there was very little cost for me personally, but I'm still grateful all the time to those generous family members who pretty much financed that experience because there's no fucking way I made enough to cover even 1% of it. Next was the time that I went to another city for a convention and only realized as I was setting up the fucking table that we had forgotten the cash box at home, an hour and a half away, and the vendor's hall was 10 minutes away from opening. Even thinking back to that one physically hurts me. It's one of those experiences that gives you anxiety even in hindsight, even knowing that it turned out okay. 
This was the same convention where I took like six on-the-spot commissions during a one-day event, which if you've watched my Artist Alley advice series, you know goes against an entire section of my own advice. I was so fucking stressed, and I finished the last commission 10 minutes after the Artist Alley closed. Fortunately, the person who commissioned me was really, really nice about it, and they waited for me, and they were just super understanding. That convention was just such a disaster, exclusively because I'm such a chaotic dumbass. The last bad experience was not a result of my own mistakes, which is as shocking for me as it is for you. This convention was so poorly managed that it still makes me angry even now. The artist alley wasn't in a closed off hall or anything, so people could just walk in and out with absolutely no management. Like normally the vendor's hall is in its own area that's sealed off with doors and limited entrances that are monitored by staff to make sure that no one gets in before or after the hours that are set and that no one who shouldn't be in there is in there. This shit show did not have that. It was just an open ass room with a million entrances and no staff even trying to monitor who was coming in. What does that mean for artists? That attendees are in the fucking artist alley two hours before it opens. Customers are trying to buy shit while your table hasn't even been set up. They're asking questions and touching shit while you're literally in the process of putting together the bare ass skeleton of your display. And worse, they have ample opportunity to steal shit, which a ton of artists reported. It was a disaster for everyone selling there. Assuming they even found their tables, because there were no staff in the alley for the first few hours and there was no signage anywhere at all. There were just clumps of artists, scared and confused, quietly asking each other, is this it? Oh god, what's going on? Where am I? I'm still full of fucking rage over this and it's been four years. Alright, now we're here. My favorite section. The weirdest convention experiences. The majority of these are commission related because when you go into the on the spot commission business, you expect, hey, draw my OC. And obviously a lot of people do want that. But my favorite gems are not that. For example, one person commissioned a Love Live idol card of Waluigi, which is still definitively the best thing that I've ever created with my own two hands. I would have done that for free. I regret accepting payment. They were the ones doing me the service for even requesting it. Let me just put it up on the screen here because historical moments like this deserve to be immortalized. The next one was potentially even weirder simply because of how specific it was. This guy and his friends come up to the table. One asks if he can order a commission and instantly looks like he regrets asking because it means he actually has to say what he wants. And when someone looks embarrassed of what they're about to ask you to draw, you instantly think it's going to be not safe for work. But he took me by surprise by requesting a comic strip of Garfield training with Goku over the span of a week on a mountaintop, in a dojo, doing push-ups, hiking, all that shit. And on the last day, which happens to be a Monday, they fight 1v1 and Garfield is somehow the proud yet still unimpressed victor who ends the comic with I hate Mondays. I've never had someone come to me with such a concrete idea who knew exactly what they wanted like this guy. He clearly came to the convention planning to commission someone for this. He sat down and thought about it. And when he picked it up and I asked if it was all right, he looked me dead in the eyes and said, it is the best possible version of what it is. And I have never known an honor like that before or since. The last weird experience isn't about commissions, nor is it technically about the convention itself. It's actually about the convention hotel. To open this, one of my favorite parts of selling at conventions is the hotel. I love hotels. My ideal vacation is just vibing in a hotel room. I don't know why I can't put it into words. It's just how I am. So after the artist alley closes, I'm just fucking constantly and relentlessly excited to head back to the hotel, get fast food, and watch stuff while I work on the day's commissions. This hotel, however, really threw a wrench in my relaxation plans, because here we are, 4am. We vibed, we had a great night, and we're past the fuck out. But my partner shakes me awake, and I'm instantly enraged because of who I am as a person, and I'm one second away from ranting about how early we have to wake up, and oh my god, no amount of coffee can make up for this one minute of lost sleep that she's responsible for. But she stops me by pointing at the curtains and just whispering, what is that? And because I'm full of rage, my instantaneous response is, it's nothing, there's nothing there. And I have just enough time to finish that sentence before the thing in question fucking extends a webbed wing and my heart shits itself because there is a fucking bat in our hotel room, just vibing behind the curtain. And I am sure as fuck awake now. My partner hides in the bathroom and I, braless and in Edmonton Oilers boxer shorts, storm the fuck down to the lobby and politely express that there's a bat in our room. I actually really regret how aggressive and rude I was about it because it wasn't the receptionist's fault that this bat decided to take up residence in our curtain. But anyway, he calls security up to check it out with me. And security gets there and all the way up to the room I can tell that he thinks I'm full of shit. Like I heard a noise and just assumed it could be a bat. 
But lo and fucking behold, he opens the door, and this feral asshole of a bat swoops at him with the speed and ferocity of Sonic the Hedgehog on a very strong stimulant. And all I heard was, oh shit, that's a bat, before he slammed the door shut again. And I'm not gonna lie, I took a great deal of satisfaction in that, because yeah, dickweed, I told you it was a goddamn bat. He was actually really nice, not a dickweed at all. And he ushered my partner carefully out of the room and helped me get all of our stuff out while the bat calmed down and went back to vibing in the curtains. They called animal control and gave us a room upgrade to this gigantic suite with a beautiful view of the city and they caught that night for us, which was almost worth the bat, but not quite. My favorite part is that when we checked out, they did apologize for the bat, but essentially said, you know, sometimes there are bats. Nothing to be done about the bats. And heavily implied that bats are just a regular problem for them and pretty much just reside rent-free in their vent system. Like, these staff were very, very accustomed to giving people the bat speech and the comped room. I was unbelievably pissed at the time, but this is genuinely one of my favorite convention memories now, and I fondly remember our winged roommate. Anyway, there we have my best, worst, and weirdest convention experiences. Hopefully you enjoyed them as much as we did. <laughs> if you want to have a say in what topic I discuss next, please check out the Twitter poll linked in the description and vote for one of the four options for this week. Also, shameless plug, because of Kofi's recent changes, I've rebooted my Kofi page, and I'm now offering exclusive content for supporters over there, including speed paints and doodles that I don't post anywhere else, line art files for coloring, and monthly discount codes for my store and my commission. If you like my content, please consider supporting me over there, I would really appreciate it. Thank you for watching, and please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video.